G'day guys, how you doing? And I thought I'd travel up to a nice little location I know of here in the Barossa Valley for a, uh, a night of imaging. Now, tonight I'm not gonna be using the, uh, the twin rasses, um, so we're gonna be doing something a little bit differently. And the reason for that is I'm still waiting for my uh, other counterweight to arrive. So until that counterweight arrives, the, uh, the rasses sort of have to be benched a little bit, which, uh, which kind of sucks because I want to get them out here and I want to start um, imaging the constellation of Orion with them and uh, mosaicing. So, uh, yeah, but I didn't really want to waste uh, a clear night, especially like, uh, like today. So I thought I'd bring up my other telescope, which is the Skywatcher Evo Star 150ED. Now, I haven't really done too much uh, imaging with that one because the RAS is pretty much... Uh, take up all my time. So uh, yeah, I thought we'll get that out. We'll hook up one of my Nikon cameras to it and uh, and see what we come up with. So uh, we'll do things a little bit differently. Well, on that note, um, before the uh, gets too dark, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna start setting up. So I'll speak to you guys uh, shortly. Well guys, we are just about ready to start imaging. Um, I'm pretty uh, excited about uh, tonight, purely because this is the CGXL's first travel night out doing some astro, same with the scope as well. So uh, I'm a bit excited. And, uh, and also I want to um, let you guys uh, know on a little bit of a, a tip. If you travel with your equipment too, especially uh, obviously your, uh, your tripod here or your um, mount, it's always best to travel with your uh, clutches disengaged so that way it gives the mount a bit of movement within your car just in case you're going over a, uh, a big bump or anything like that. The last thing you want is your clutches to be engaged and when you go over a, uh, a bump you send all that force as well through into your, uh, into your mount and uh, that's the last thing you want to do. You don't want to start stuffing up motors and, uh, and gears and all that sort of stuff. So Leave your clutches disengaged when you're traveling um, with your mount. I've been doing that uh, yeah, for quite a while and I've never had any issues at all. So uh, yeah, hopefully that's a little bit of a uh, handy tip um, that you guys didn't know about. Now, the tough part. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's tough. I was hoping to uh, <laughs> put the Z5 on the back of this uh, scope here. But my Z50 was what I was going to uh, record um, tonight's video has uh, is now showing up that the battery's a bit flat. So I've got that USB charging at the moment. Um, but it kind of sucks because when I left, the battery was saying it was fine. And now it's saying it's, it's flat. So I don't know what's uh, going on there. Um, yeah, that kind of sucks. But we'll see what we can do. Um, I will eventually get the uh, the Z5 on the back of this uh, camera because I want to see how the full frame uh, image goes with it. Um, but yeah, now I'm going to image the uh, the great Orion Nebula, a big fan favorite for uh, for everyone. Um, I know when the Orion Nebula comes back around, all of a sudden you start seeing all these images pop up, and it's it's uh, it's one of those uh, I can never really forget my first. Uh, first image of the uh, Orion Nebula, it um, put a big grin in my face and every time I image it, it always brings back that sort of memory. So uh, I'm pretty excited to see what we uh, what we get. Also, I don't know, maybe the Seven Sisters, I might have a few shots of that. Now I'm not gonna go too crazy into the, uh, into the imaging session. Um, it's just really having a bit of fun tonight, you know, and going back to the days of uh, a mount, a telescope and a camera. I mean, um, as you guys know, the uh, twin rasses now, that's a lot of gear I'm carrying and it's a bit more serious sort of setup. So uh, for this to only take a very short period of time to set up was, uh, was pretty cool. I did like that. So yeah, I'm gonna start the um, uh, two-star alignment procedure, then the polar alignment um, and, uh, and we'll be off and running. Unfortunately, I do have to turn that camera off because uh, I do need it to, um, uh, see my stars and, and all that because I don't have any eyepieces um, for this scope. So uh, yeah, sorry guys, but uh, I'll be back with you uh, after I've done all that. All right, back again. And uh, I think I've got enough charge in my uh, Z50 now. 
to be able to uh, hopefully record um, throughout the rest of the night. Now, we are all, all polar aligned, all star aligned, and pointing up at the Orion. So I'm pretty excited to, uh, to see how these images here turn out underneath the dark sky. Um, now one of the things that uh, I will have to do because I'm shooting past the 30 second exposures tonight is <laughs> use this guy here, cable release button. So I really am turning back the time a little bit and, uh, and going completely basic. Um, so I'm gonna be standing there <laughs> throughout the night uh, hitting this every minute, two minutes, um, just to uh, just to take my my frames. Now, I'm not going to be doing any darks for this or any bias or any flats, nothing like that. I'm just purely just going to be taking these images. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, and we're going to see how it all turns out. Now, I'm also uh, not using a uh, a field flattener or focal reducer with the telescope, so. It's pretty much as it is straight out of the box when you buy it. Um, so it's a, uh, a 1200 mil focal length, and, uh, and that's a fair, uh, fair <laughs> length for uh, longer exposures unguided. Um, so we'll go maybe a minute and a half, two minute exposures. Um, I'm thinking ISO 1600 or 3200, we'll see, and, uh, and go from there. So, uh, I think it's time to uh, start imaging. I've uh, taken about 20 images of um, Orion at a, a minute and a half with an ISO of 3200, and I've taken about another oh, 20 or so um, at about 15 seconds for the core. So I'm going to try and uh, see what we can do about not um, blowing out the core too much because I know that's something easily done um, with, uh, with Orion. Now I've had some cloud cover sort of start to come in, um, which uh, created a uh, quite large stars. Um, if you're not too sure, there's, when there's a bit of moisture in the air, um, your stars tend to bloat. So uh, it can add a pretty cool effect, but um, sometimes it's not quite what we want. So I've had to um, switch across, and I'm just taking a few frames of uh, Eta Carina. Right now, um, 30 second ISO 6400, and I've just got that on um, interval timer, so it's just continually going and going and going. So, um, unfortunately, I can't do that with the one minute 30 second exposures. Um, I could with the old uh, Nikon D810A that I used to own. So, I'd love it if Nikon did some sort of firmware update where you could shoot longer um, exposures in camera, like the old D810A or the uh, um, the later Nikon Z, uh, Nikon um, 7, geez, I forgot what it's called. Can't remember. Um, so, so, yeah, but uh, it's been fun going back to the old uh, shutter release cable and just taking the time to stare up at the stars um, and image. You know, it's been a bit of fun. Well, guys, I'm going to uh, pretty much start packing up because there's more cloud. Um, coming in which i did not see coming but uh yeah i hope you've enjoyed this video uh if you got any comments uh let me know um give me a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and if you're new to this channel um please check out my other videos and subscribe well guys on that note i'm going to call it a night so until next time take it easy see you